Hey guys, Neely here, and I am coming in for another Instant Pot video today. I wanted to do a video on how I make bone broth in the Instant Pot. I have been making bone broth for quite a few years now, and um, I used to boil it on the stove or in a crock pot for, you know, 12 to 24 hours, and now I do it in my Instant Pot, and it takes about two hours, which is so nice. Well, two hours of cooking time, there is uh, an amount of time that it takes to heat up the pot, but still, in the grand scheme of things, it is so much faster, and I get a super nice um, thick broth uh, that gels nicely and um, I just love it so super easy and this is not necessarily a recipe video I'm not going to give you exact measurements because I don't even use exact measurements when I make my bone broth I kind of just throw things in and I throw in what I have sometimes I don't have all the different vegetables and all the different spices basically all you need to make bone broth is bones and water and anything beyond that is just icing on the cake. The first thing I'm going to do is just fill my pot with as many bones as it'll hold, you know, about maybe three quarters of the way because um, I'm going to be putting in a few vegetables and I don't want it to be filled all the way to the top. You don't want to go above the max line, of course. So what I do um, just in my normal life is when we have something with bones in it, um, at the end of the meal, I will collect up the bones that are nice and I want to keep and I will just throw them in the freezer and I have just bags, Ziploc bags in the freezer that are filled with bones and I just collect them until I want to make bone broth. And I don't separate types of bones. I know some people prefer to do that and they'll make a, a dedicated chicken broth and a dedicated beef broth but I have not noticed that it makes that big of a difference for me. Um, if I was going for like a broth that I was just gonna sip on its own and I wanted a very specific flavor, then maybe I would do that, but I use mine like for cooking rice and for throwing into chili and different things where the flavor isn't that big of a deal, and so if it's mixed beef and pork and chicken, it's not a big deal. I would not put in fish, um, mix it in. That might be a little weird. I pieced out a chicken a while back and I took off the legs and the thighs and the breasts and the wings and then I just threw the back and the, um, the rest of the bones in a bag and these are still raw and I throw together raw and cooked bones. They're all gonna get cooked in the end in the Instant Pot so that's what I do. So there it is, you can see I got some spare rib bones, some wing tips from when we did wings. This is from steak bones so I have all kinds of stuff in here and I used all but one of my bags so I'll just throw this back in the freezer for when I need it next time and now I'm gonna throw in um, my vegetables and my herbs I happen to have some herbs out of the garden these are no not necessary um, as far as you know getting fresh herbs like this but I had them from the garden so I'm gonna throw those in just as is and then I have about half of a large onion just roughly chopped and about three or four carrots uh, just rinsed and roughly chopped and I would put celery in too if I had some but I don't so we will just make do with what we've got here then as far as spices I'm gonna do about a tablespoon of salt and a good sprinkle of garlic I would do onion powder as well but I happen to have fresh onions so I'm just gonna leave the onion powder out then we got some coarse black pepper. You can throw in whole peppercorns as well if you have those. And then I will throw in a couple of bay leaves. And all of these spices are totally uh, optional and you can adjust them to your taste. You can leave them out if you just want the health benefits of the broth and you're not so worried about the um, flavor of it if you're going to be using it in you know, like I said, cooking rice or something like that where you're not worried about having some intense flavor. You can leave out any of the spices that you'd like. Then the next thing that I'm going to put in is some apple cider vinegar. And I'm going to do about two tablespoons. I don't measure it, but it helps release the minerals from the bones. So I add it in at the beginning. And um, then I'm going to just fill this up with water. I won't fill it all the way. I want the water to come up maybe to around the max line or a little bit under. So I have my half gallon of water here. Ooh, making a mess. So all in all it took about three quarts of water. So that is as full as I want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and close my lid, put it on ceiling, and then it is recommended to let the 
bones soak in the um, apple cider vinegar water for a little while to help them start releasing the minerals before the cooking starts. So I'm going to use the timer function and this is an optional step. I have done it without this step before and still had great results. But it's just one of those things to get a little bit extra of the minerals into your broth. So I am going to start the manual program for 120 minutes, two hours, and it's faster to go down on the timer instead of up and go down to zero and then down one more to 120 minutes. And before it starts, I'm going to hit timer. I'm going to go down to 30, whoops, 30 minutes. So I just got the hour to zero and I'm going to hit timer again and it's going to start flashing the minutes and I'm going to go up to 30 minutes and then I'm going to let it start. So it is going to sit here for 30 minutes and the bones are going to start leaching all the great minerals and then it will start, it will heat up, it will take a while to come to pressure because it is so full. Um, the fuller the pot is, the longer it will take to come to pressure and then it will cook for the hour, uh, two hours, 120 minutes and then it will go to keep warm mode and I will just kind of let it sit in keep warm mode. I'll let the pressure come down, but I will just let it sit until I'm able to get to it. And who knows when that'll be. Um, my life is busy with four kids. So um, I will let it sit until I am ready to deal with it. Then I will um, pull out the pot. I will let it cool for a little while. I will strain off the broth and then I will refill it with more water and I will do it again. So I will get at least two batches of broth out of this one pot of bones. And what I do is I mix together the two batches of broth because the first batch will be a lot more rich, the second ba batch will not be. So I mix them together so I get a uniform um, through the whole two batches, it'll all be the same. All right, you can see that it has been sitting here on keep warm mode for almost five hours. So I have been letting it just sit here all day long. We were just busy. We went to the park. We did a few things. And now the little ones are to bed and the other two are having their screen time. So now I actually have a chance to do something with this. Uh, but that's the nice thing about the Instant Pot is I can just leave it and it will be sitting there ready and waiting for me whenever I am ready to deal with it. So I'll just open it up and let you see what's in here. And of course it was natural pressure released with it with it being this full you don't want to do a quick quick pressure release. And this is what it looks like. Nothing too exciting but I am going to strain off um, the liquid and then add another three quarts of water and maybe a few more spices and then I will let it cook again for another couple of hours and then I will have about six quarts of broth. I'll mix it all together. I'll chill it and in the morning uh, or after it's all the way chilled it will um, be fairly gelatinous. I'll try to show you that um, in the morning. All right guys, it is the next day and I have my broth that's all chilled here. I kept both batches separate to show you just the difference between the first batch. This is the first batch. This is the second batch. You can see the difference in color. Um, this is the leftovers that were strained out. And I just wanted to show you like this is a, uh, was a, a beef bone, a big roast bone. And you can see how it's just, you know, you can just crush it with your fingers. Um, the, so you can see that the Instant Pot, just in the two hours of cooking time, really gets a lot out of the bones. And you can actually re-boil uh, the bones and get broth, you know, three or four times. Basically you could do it until the bones turn to mush um, and you'll still get some benefit and some nutrition out of it. It's just the first batches are the ones that taste the best. So that's what I usually just do and um, but if you're really trying to get a lot of nutrition for a very small amount, amount of money you can reuse the bones multiple times and you'll continue to get um, good benefit. Of course the first batch is going to have the most concentrated amount of the gelatin and the collagen and um, the minerals. After it's sat all night a layer of fat kind of floats to the top and hardens and I usually just peel, peel that off and discard it. Some people will keep it in their broth and some people will um, use uh, peel it off and then use it like to roast vegetables and stuff. I just have found that I don't really care for it and I've heard that it's 
possibly the fat gets denatured by um, uh, cooking for the long period of time. It's just it's not something that I'm interested in, so I just throw it away. Um, but this is the first batch, and you can see you can see how gelatinous it is. So you can tell it's got all kinds of good good gelatin in it. And then the second batch that I did. Um, it's not as gelatinous, but it still has a little bit of a bounce to it, um, but just not quite as concentrated as the first batch. You can see it's it's just a little thicker, a little more jello-y than just straight water, but it's still going to have all kinds of good minerals in it. And I'll probably just mix these two together, and then it'll be somewhere in between, and um, good for whatever recipes I have to use it in, soups, stews, cooking, rice, all that kind of good stuff. So that is it. I hope this was helpful for you guys to see how I make my broth. If you have any questions, please let me know. And again, there are thousands of different ways to make broth and lots of just different recipes out there. So if you want some very specific measurements, just do a Google search for bone broth, bone broth recipes and you will find tons. Um, but I hope that was helpful just to see how I do it. Hope you guys are doing great, and I'll be back again with more videos soon. Bye, guys.